Hello, everybody, and welcome to my item and equipment tier list for the Seekers of the Storm DLC. Now, normally, I don't make my item and equipment tier list this soon after an update because there are changes to existing things and then a bunch of new stuff. However, this time around, there are zero changes to existing items, and the items that we do have that are new, there's not that many of them. So if you'd like a full list, there's a link in the description below of every single item in the game. It's a Google Doc that I keep maintained, so check that out if you're looking for all the items in the game. We don't have time for that here. So let's get started with the new items in the Seekers of the Storm DLC, starting with the antler shield. I'm just going to save you guys the time. Put that bad boy in D tier. This might even be an F tier item, but everything obviously has a use in this game because the scrapper exists and printers. So this thing is pure printer fodder. So antler shield gives you a chance to reflect damage back to the attacker, which is based on the damage that they deal to you. The big problem here is that it's you're dealing damage based on the attacker's damage back to their own health. Monsters deal so much less damage than they have maximum health, it's not even close. Let's just say best case scenario, you're on like stage three, stage four, you found a printer for antler shield, you have 10 stacks, right? So not only is it a chance to deal damage, it reflects very low damage as well. So 10 stacks of this item is a 100% chance to reflect 100% of the damage that you take back to the attacker. Let's say you're on stage three, stage four, 10 stacks of this item, 10 stacks, best case scenario, right? And let's say you have about, you know, 700 to 800 health. And then a big old Elder Marion pops up, right? The Elder Marion, big, scary enemy. He attacks you. He hits you big chunk damage. Let's say you go from 800 health down to 400 health. He chunks you to half health. How much damage do you do to the enemy? 400. 400 damage back to the enemy. And remember, you're now at half health. This item is so garbage, it's not even funny because it gets worse and worse and worse as time goes on. Remember, that was with 10 stacks of the item. Let's say, again, you have 10 stacks of the item, but you're on stage five fighting the boss. Let's say you get a grandparent boss. Usually those things will have like 25,000 to 30,000 30, health. 30,000 health. And if they hit you and you get chunked to half health, let's say at that point you have like 1,000 max HP. So you just took 1,000 damage. You're dealing 1,000 damage to a 30,000 health enemy with 10 stacks of this. It's so incredibly bad. It's it's not even funny. So this might even deserve like antler tier. <laughs> F tier might even not, not be low enough. But again, this thing is just printer fodder. Just put it in the scrapper, put it in the printer, forget about it. It is terrible. All right, next up is the bolstering lantern. This thing should be pretty easy to find in your logbook because uh, it should be the only item glowing. Nice little bug there. So while you are below half HP, you receive a damage increase of 20%. You can think of this damage increase the same as delicate watches. Uh, just this thing doesn't break. However, it's conditional. 50% health. There are basically no times where you're going to be constantly sitting below half health. Even on a survivor like Rex, where you're constantly draining your health back and forth. It's going up and down, up and down, up and down. There's just no time where you're constantly below half health. You're just going to die if that's the case. This item's pretty bad, unfortunately, just because of the condition here. If this said while below like 75% health, there'd be like more of an argument for it. But this game, the way it works is that you have so many items that grant you healing, especially healing on hit, right? Leeching Seed, Harvester Scythe, you get one proc chain on like 10 enemies, you're instantly back to full health. Uh, other than that, you have Monster Teeth, Med Kits, Cautious Slug, so many healing items in the game that you're just not going to be below have health. So unfortunately, while the item effect is like, okay, the condition for activating it is terrible. So it's better than antler shield for sure, but it's basically just more printer fodder. Next up is the chronic expansion, uh, common item. This one gives you for every five enemies that you kill a 10% damage increase, and you have to stay in combat. An important distinction here is that staying in combat for this item is specifically dealing or taking damage. If you can go into the game and test it right now, if you'd like, but if you just hold down your primary ability or something, you, that doesn't count as staying in combat. There's a lot of other effects like Kasha Slug and Red Whip, they actually are different from this item entirely. So Kasha Slug, if you don't take any damage, you will get the heal. You can still deal damage normally and get the heal, but if you take damage, it stops the heal. Red Whip, on the other hand, if you use any combat-related ability, it'll just instantly cancel the Red Whip's effect. It doesn't matter if you're actually hitting a target. The Chronic Expansion is pretty much in the middle of those two items, where you can use a combat ability, but as, if it does not hit anything, you do not count as staying in combat. But as long as you are hitting something or you are taking damage from something, you are still in combat, you can still retain the damage bonus. So you have to continue continuously be hitting things to get this damage increase. The obvious exception here is the forgive me please equipment, which basically just keeps on racking up the kills. Every time the equipment procs, you get a stack of this item so you can get a lot of damage from the chronic expansion. For that one single use case alone, probably belongs here in B tier. If you don't have a forgive me please, obviously gonna be like down here, C, maybe even D tier, just cause you have to continuously hit things. There's gonna be a lot of downtime in your normal runs. But if you have forgive me please, especially this thing can go way up here. So just averaging it out, nice little B tier item. The knockback fin on the other hand, this is also going to be a D tier item. Knockback Finn. Uh, it's called knockback, but it actually knocks them up 
into the air, which is <laughs> kind of interesting. So it's a chance on hit to knock enemies into the air. It doesn't even do you the favor, do you the solid of stunning the enemy so they can still attack you as normal. Th this thing is so garbage, it's not even funny. There is zero synergy with this item and every other item in the game. There, there is no point, <laughs> no point in taking this item. Maybe if you print like 50 stacks, it says height increases per stack. So maybe if you print like 50 stacks of this item, you launch a beetle into the stratosphere and he comes down and takes fall damage, like cool. But most of the enemies you would want to do that to aren't going to take the fall damage because they either can't be knocked up like bosses or they're already flying in the air like a greater wisp. So they're not going to take fall. Like this <laughs> knockback bit is so incredibly bad. D tier for sure. Warped Echo. All right, this thing's pretty interesting. So the Warped Echo is the source of a major bug in the game at the moment and has not been patched out yet. It probably will be in the future, hopefully. The invincibility bug on Mythrix or on Scavengers, if you've seen it, this is more than likely the source of it. So it's kind of hard to gauge its effectiveness. Also, people are claiming that it gives double damage to you. So I don't know how true that is. So what it's supposed to do is when you take damage, it's supposed to take half of that damage, just deal it to you as normal, and then the other half is delayed for three seconds, and then it's dealt to you. Now, again, some people are claiming that you're taking the full 100% up front, and then three seconds later, you're taking the same 100%, thus doubling the damage that you take. Again, I do not have any proof of that. I've been trying to test it. I can't really figure out if it's happening or not, but regardless, let's say this item is functioning totally normally. It's all right. It's okay. The 10 second cooldown is pretty dang long. Um, you're just going to be hit by anything, and you can't really control when this item procs at all. Uh, you can do your best to avoid all the small enemies like lesser wisps and whatnot, but for the most part, whenever you get hit, it's just going to proc the warped echo. You, you have no control over it. So ideally, you would want this up for larger hits, obviously, the Elder Lemurians, like a Golem Beam, stuff like that. But most of the time, you're just going to get tickled by a lesser wisp or like a, a mushroom attack, not even like the explosion, just like the damage over time on the ground. Any damage you take is going to proc the warped echo. And you do get an additional stack of this, uh, we'll call it a buff, right? Every, every stack you get gives you additional instance of delaying damage, which is pretty good. But unfortunately, it's not like amazing. So I think this item belongs in C tier. 10 second cooldown is very long and this is not affected by anything. It's always going to be a 10 second cooldown. It's just not that good. So moving on here to the uncommon items, starting with the chance doll. This bad boy gives you a chance to upgrade items from the chance shrine. How many times did I just say chance in the five seconds? You, you tell me. All right. So simply think of this item as chance shrines are effectively the same exact thing. However, whatever item pops out, this guy has a chance to upgrade it to the next rarity and this actually is really interesting so common items go to green green go to red red go to yellow you can get boss items from the chant shrine i don't know if that's a uh... I don't know if that's considered an upgrade in most scenarios, getting like a beetle gland from a behemoth, but uh, <laughs> we'll roll with it. So the chance shrine still functions as normal. I don't remember the percentages off the top of my head. So let's say you get a common item, which is obviously the most common outcome from a chance shrine. If you have one stack of a chance doll, there's a 20% chance that that common item turns into an uncommon. So a white goes to a green. Same thing with a green item. If you get a green, which is actually not very rare from a chance shrine, it's like probably a 30%-ish chance. So let's say you get a green item. If you have one stack of this item, there's a 20% chance that then that green turns into a red. That's not bad odds, honestly. There have been plenty of times where I have a couple stacks of a chance doll and I hit a shrine and I get two legendaries from it. Like, it's not that uncommon at all. Finally, yes, this is affected by the 57 leaf clover, which just makes it all the more better. So it's actually a pretty dang good item, all things considered. Solid A tier item. Chance doll, very good for one of the new greens. All right, next up is the luminous shot. On paper, this thing seems really cool and really powerful. However, in practice, not so much. So when it says that the next primary attack, it's specifically talking about about your primary ability, right? Not, not just any ability. Your next primary attack, so on Commando, your pistol shot, Huntress, your arrows, Rex, your pew, whatever it is, it deals plus 150% damage. This is talking about your base damage. It does not scale off of the damage of the ability that procced it. This is talking about your survivor's base damage, right? So for example, commando's pistols each deal 100% damage. So this is a 50% increase to a commando pistol shot. However, it does stack up to five times. So the way this works is you use your secondary ability, whatever your M2 is, or on console, I don't know what keybind that is, and you just press it up to five times. You get five stacks of this item. You use your primary ability, bam, a little like miniature uh, capacitor lightning bolt strikes the enemy and deals, you know, damage based on how many stacks that you have. Unfortunately, again, because it's base damage, is actually not that potent and on top of that it has to scale with your secondary cooldown obviously survivors that have a uh, shorter secondary cooldowns like the new seeker her balls have like a three second cooldown or something on rex this thing's actually quite potent so it heavily depends on which survivor you're playing because again that cooldown is very important also backup mags i wouldn't really consider them a massive synergy with this item because backup mags don't do anything to reduce the cooldown of the secondary yes you get a bunch of charges right away so i guess you can spam it and get a five stack luminous shot right away but as soon as you run out of all the charges of backup mag which will be pretty fast um there's no 
like no more synergy, quote unquote. So with all those things considered, I think this is a solid B tier item. It's probably a bit better than the Chronic Expansion. Next up, the Noxious Thorn. This thing is a chance on being hit. <laughs> Here we are again. To apply two stacks of bleed to anything nearby. Two stacks of bleed. Chance on hit, you take damage, you have a chance to then put two stacks of bleed on an enemy. And on top of that, if they already have uh, some kind of debuff, it'll just give you one additional stack of that debuff instead. I don't need to bother explaining this item, guys. Like, you, I could dive deep into, oh, like, which debuffs could you optimize, blah, blah, blah. It's just... Put it here. <laughs> it's so bad. A chance on taking damage. Again, so it's conditional on you taking damage. And then it's a chance to do its effect. Now, nah, this thing is so bad. So bad. All right, next up, the prayer beads. I've received a lot of questions about this item on my stream. Essentially, just think of it like this. When you level up, you gain health, damage, armor. Um, I think another couple stats as well. You just gain some stats, right? Specifically health and damage. Those are easily the most notable. When you level up with the prayer beads, it takes 20% of whatever the stats are that you gain from leveling. So let's say health. Let's say you get... 15 health on level up. It takes 20%, so three of that health, and it puts it in the item, but it's totally useless until you lose the prayer beads. You have to scrap them or print them or get rid of them in some other way. I can't really think of any other way. But if you remove the item from your inventory, you then gain all of those stats that are inside of the item. So just think of it like every time you level up, you get an extra 20% of whatever stats you get stored in the prayer beads, and then you have to get rid of the prayer bead item itself to then gain the item. So you'll see a little stack counter in the bottom left of your uh, buff bar, and that just correlates to how many levels are inside of the item. So just think about it as when you level up, you simply get 20% extra stats. Not a terrible item. I'm gonna put it in C tier here. It's probably better than the Warped Echo. C tier here, it's not terrible. The next item though, however, the Sail Star. Our boy, the Sail Star. The Sail Star gives you an extra item the first time you open a chest on a stage, and it gives you a chance to get an additional item for every stack that you have. Now, the cool thing about this item and why it is so good and everybody should love this item is that it keeps the chest's loot pool. It doesn't give you like a chance to get a regular chest worth of items. No, if you open open the large chest, which only can give a green or a red item, you're going to get a green or a red item. If you open the legendary chest, you're getting another legendary item, boy. I hope you're ready. <laughs> this item is very fun to play around, and it's very powerful. There's enough said about that. Easy S tier item. If you load into a stage four with a guaranteed legendary, you just kill all the enemies, save up for the legendary, boom, you get double stacks. Simple as that. Very good item, very powerful. Also, the way this works is if you have a sail star, you use it, and then you get another sail star on that stage, you can use it again because it turns into a consumed state, which is not a tier of item, like a consumed Dios, a consumed elixir. And then on the next stage, it simply regenerates itself like a regenerating scrap wood. So very, very, very powerful item. And then last year for the green items, the unstable transmitter. This thing, as soon as you reach low health, you do a small amount of damage in an area, and then you get randomly teleported somewhere on the map with a two minute cooldown. Now, obviously it's gonna scale in both in damage and cooldown, but based on how many stacks you have, but I'll save you the time again. This item is also D tier. Like maybe it can save you occasionally, but it doesn't belong in C tier for sure because you're going to hit low health and then you just get randomly like sucked out of the zone, put in a different spot, but there's no guarantee it puts you in a safe spot. You could just be next to another out of the Marion because of how the enemies work in this game. You could have a, a random imp overlord who's just been chilling on the edge of the map, just doing nothing, floating in a circle, waiting for you, you know, and you get teleported right next to him and then pff, you're just dead. <laughs> so unfortunately, yeah, unstable transmitter, not a good item whatsoever. All right, moving on to the legend legendary item starting with the electric boomerang the electric boomerang has a chance on hit to fire out deal some damage stun all enemies and then return to you i've only used this item one time and i think i died like the stage right after i got it so i didn't really get to test it that much but from what i've tested and from what my chat has told me it's okay it's not amazing uh you would much rather have just like a bunch of atgs and ukuleles and stuff but it's just a, it's another proc chain item so it, if you get it that's cool it'll help your proc chains but the damage is pretty low and from what i saw the return path on the boomerang can be pretty bad like it's not a resonance disc where it pew, shoots straight out and then shoots straight back. The boomerang can like do a massive arc to come back. So it's essentially only hitting things when it goes out sometimes. It just feels kind of weird. I think it's probably a solid B tier item though. It's a part of your proc chains as well. Like it, it, you're going to see it do things. It's going to be cool to see, but is it amazing? Probably not. 30% damage is super low and it all depends on how many times you're hitting the same enemy. And again, due to the return path of the boomerang being kind of wonky, I think B tier is fair. Next up is the growth nectar. This thing gives you 20% increase to all of your survivor stats while you have five plus unique buffs on your character. So basically just look at your bar above your HP. That is your buff bar. If you have five icons there, you probably also are going to have the growth nectar. It's a little bit different sometimes. For example, if you have double bands, uh, the active double band icon, like they're ready to pop, counts as a buff. But as soon as you use Kiara or Renald band, the buff will go away and that is no longer a buff. It's like just a cooldown, I guess there. So it's a little bit weird with what counts as a buff and what doesn't. But for the most part, if you have a run that's going on uh, past the first loop, you're going to have growth nectar up pretty much all of the time. So it's not a terrible item. It's kind of like a win more item 
item, but even then it's only 20% bonus stats. And for that, that's a legendary effect. So it's like, it's okay. I would say it's not amazing. Probably another B tier item, maybe even C tier, honestly, like five buffs is quite a bit. So you could make the argument for maybe B tier here, but honestly, because it's a legendary item, you're rarely going to see it and its effect is not that potent. I think C tier is pretty fair. All right, next up is the runic lens. This guy is a bit wordy, but all of this means is that you're dealing a massive meteor on top of an enemy chance on hit and the chance and the damage of the meteor both scale based on the damage of the ability that procced it. So loader, Railgunner, all those slow firing, hard hitting abilities are going to have a higher chance of proccing the meteor. And when it does proc, it's dealing more damage. I believe that's what this overspill keyword is talking about here. It's tough to say because uh, they didn't really write out what the keywords actually do in this update. So, oops. But I believe that's what overspill means. So you have a small chance regularly to deal a pretty massive damage meteor. And then that chance and the damage of the meteor both scale with the damage of your ability, as well as the amount of stacks that you have of the runic lens. So I've had this item a couple times and it's pretty potent. It's not bad at all, actually. I think it's a solid A tier item. I don't know if the Meteor has any proc coefficient. That's uh, pretty hard to tell. I'll have to go through and like do some more testing. But even without proc coefficient, it's still a lot of damage. And it's going to happen frequently enough that it's it's a pretty solid item. A tier for sure. Sonorous Whispers. I'll just, hey, I'll save this for you, boys. Boom, S tier item. This is essentially the 56 Leaf Clover from Risk of Rain 1, but just better. So this thing says when a large monster is killed, in this case, large monster means boss, not the teleporter boss specifically, but anything that is a boss enemy, Imp Overlord, Beetle Queen, Stone Titan, etc. That is a large monster. Monster, they will always drop you an item <laughs> on top of that. And this is why it's so crazy. Elites have a 15%, 15% chance to also do the exact same thing. Drop an item. This works with the 57 leaf clover, by the way. And yes, just like the chance stall, this is also affected by the 57 leaf clover. So if you have this plus a clover, it's going to look like you're running the artifact of sacrifice. You're going to get so many items on the stage. It's not even funny. The easiest S tier of my entire life It's probably better than sail star. It definitely is better than sail star. This is probably the best item in the game right now. Sonorous whispers is incredible incredibly good, even without a clover. Uh, but the next up here, uh, War Bonds. This thing... <laughs> I'm sorry, dude, the war bonds, so, so bad. So the way this item is worded, it yields 75 gold and it says based on difficulty level and survivor level. The way you would think this works is the same as a Gore's Tome, right? The Gore's Tome says it gives you 25 gold when you pick up the little nugget and it scales with time. So the Gore's is always gonna give you one chest's worth of gold when you pick it up. You would think that the war bond, therefore, is going to give you three chests worth of gold because each chest is 25 at the start, right? So three chests worth of, that's not how it works. It doesn't work like that. It gives you like barely under two chests worth of gold. I can't even describe to you how weird this item is and even if it did give you three chests worth of gold at the start of a stage it's still a legendary item <laughs> for a legendary item effect no absolutely not this is a d tier item like yes you can slightly speed up your stages if you're doing like a speed run or something and you get this like okay yeah, that's pretty good i guess but for the vast majority of cases this is a terrible item especially because it's a legendary d tier for sure all right next up here the long standing solitude this is a lunar item so all this thing does essentially is convert the gold that you get into experience for your character and then when you level up you can simply purchase anything on the stage for free per stack of the item. So if you have three stacks of this item, every time you level up, you get three purchases on that stage. And a purchase can be anything that costs gold, a chest, a shrine, whatever. Unfortunately, there's a cap to survival level and that's 100. So once you hit level 100, your run is pretty much done. Whatever power you have at that point, that's the power you're going to maintain for the rest of the run. And I suppose you could just keep stacking this item over and over and over. If you have infinite lunar donuts for some reason, you know what I'm talking about? You could just keep getting this item and it's like, okay, cool. It's like a slightly different play style. But at that point, why are you not just running the artifact of sacrifice? Yeah, dude, for the majority of runs this item is just pretty garbage i would never pick it up i'm putting it here in d tier you can make some special rule set for your run if you want and do something crazy but for the most part not worth it all right last but not least is the brand new equipment here which you get from killing the false sun this thing also is kind of like an item because its effect it's called the seed of life and its effect is that it simply revives you when you're dead if your ally dies if you're playing multiplayer you can also just activate it it'll consume it and revive them instead then once it's consumed it turns into this equipment here this is essentially just like it's kind of like a mini monster tooth it's like a desk plant that shoots out monster tooth orbs if that makes sense not the best, not the best. The consumed version of it, I'll put it in D tier. Like, why would you run that? It's like a foreign fruit slash wood sprite slash it's like, you just don't need it. You can get any other equipment to be way better. But the uh, revive itself is really, it's, it's okay. I put it probably in B tier, low B tier. You know, it's a free life. If you don't need your equipment slot for damage purposes or something, you just want that extra safety net when you're going into a fight. And on top of that, most equipments just aren't very useful to begin with. So at least this one does something very useful. You know, if you make a small mistake, all of a sudden, boom, you can just come back and do a little redo. But of course, as with the Dio's best friend, you always have to weigh it against what if you didn't have it? What 
if I had instead of a useless equipment, so to speak, I had a disposable missile launcher or a royal capacitor, even a crowdfunder, stuff like that, something that deals damage to the enemy. Would I have died in the situation? Would it have turned out a bit differently? You always have to weigh those things. So maybe low B tier is a little high, maybe C tier is probably more fair. Anyway, I was a little long winded on some of the explanations. I apologize for you boys. I hope you enjoyed the item and equipment tier list. Again, link in the description below for the Google Doc with updated ranks to all of these things. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.